Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm right in the middle of doing a production run of an intercooler pipe that we manufacture out of 6061 aluminum, and I've got to weld some tile blow off file flanges onto them. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Okay, so this is our two and a half inch intercooler pipe. It's all manufactured out of 6061 aluminum. Uh, we get the bends in, we have fixtures, we cut each one of these, we put it in our jig, we tack it, pull it out, weld it, and we put it back in, uh, weld the bracket onto it, uh, then we bead roll everything, and then finally we, uh, we put a Scotch-Brite finish on it. So this is a Scotch-Brite wheel, we've got one for stainless, one for aluminum, we don't contaminate anything back and forth. So this is basically all done, except for we need to weld an aluminum. Uh, this is actually a vibrant, but it's for a tile blow off our flange onto it. These are actually coped uh, pretty much two and a half inch, which is pretty nice. Um, it's got a little bit of a gap, so I usually run it on the on the belt sander, just, just a smidge on these corners, just to get a little bit tighter fit up here. You could probably weld it if you really wanted to. Um, aluminum can be a little bit more finicky, but if you had to, you could go ahead and make a go of it. On the straight part, it actually fits up real nice, but unfortunately, um, this particular application is gonna be out here on the bend and it's, it's got just a little bit of a gap. So you definitely wanna do this very carefully. I'm gonna go ahead and take a grinder and re and put the coat back on the flange. All right, so now we got a real tight fit up, or tighter at least, so that'll work just fine. Okay, now we need to mark where this one goes because on this particular application, it's just barely down, right on the outside of the 90. Give yourself a little guide. And now we're using a one and three quarter hole saw to drill this hole. It's about the right size for the tile. Always double check, but that's for the vibrant tile and even the, the OEM tile flange. One and three quarters what I use. You definitely don't want to make the hole too big. You'd rather be a little small. We're gonna go ahead and clean it up. Okay, got it prepped. You can see the fit up looks really nice. Now the most important part of welding aluminum in my opinion, uh, definitely gotta make sure everything is super, super clean. Hopefully you have a way to store your tungs or your uh, filler where it's all um, away from contaminants, but this filler was actually sitting out you can see how dirty it can be. If it's sitting in a fab shop, definitely want to acetone. Everything you're going to be working with here, um, aluminum is just a lot more, a lot more touchy than, than stainless is. So um, I'm running a number six cup right now on this production setup. I'd prefer a number four, um, but I'm not the greatest aluminum welder to be honest with you. But um, you know, I, I get around okay, but. So we're gonna go and weld this up and just kind of show what it looks like, but all the you know all the prep and all the the fit will be will really what'll dictate the quality of the weld. Uh, I think I forgot to mention this before, but um, I'm using a 332nd filler, 
Um, I like to go with something 332nd or uh, 16th or 8th, something decent. I mean, 8th is pretty thick, but some of the blow-off valve flanges are, are real thick, so I'll go to I'll go to 8th. But 332nd works pretty good for these vibrants. They're they're a little bit thinner, so I don't want to blow through too much. Um, also, if you guys don't have one, get yourself a respirator, especially if you're welding this aluminum. Prioritize your health. I was a young, stupid welder for a long time, and you definitely don't want to risk your health when you're welding, especially dirty aluminum. Now, like I said, guys, I'm actually, um, I do a lot more stainless than I do aluminum. So if you guys have any feedback for me, I'd love to hear what your settings are, um, what cups you use. I'm gonna try and set up a machine in the shop just for aluminum and really get it dialed in. I've got a Miller Dynasty that I think I'm gonna use for that. So I'd love to hear what you guys think. And uh, after this, I'll let this cool down and then I'm gonna run it on the belt sander, or uh, I'm sorry, on the uh, scotch Bright wheel and show you the finished product. All right, and that's how it turned out after running it on the scotch Bright wheel. I think it looks pretty good. It's production work, so once you get to about 30 of these, it gets a little redundant, but still trying to make them look as good as we can. Um, if you are doing, uh, you know, production work, you're sending stuff out, at the very end, make sure you deburr. Always blow the tubes out. You don't want a piece of metal going through a customer's engine. Um, yeah, like the way it turned out. All right, guys, I hope that answered some questions. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, um, I don't do as much aluminum as I do stainless steel, so if you have any comments, questions, um, just put them down, put them down in the comments, let me know. I'd be curious what your guys' setups are what machines you're on, uh, what cups you prefer for aluminum. I'm definitely trying to get better at it this year. So hope this was helpful. If you got any questions, just let me know. And I got a couple links down below uh, for, like I use a, a Miller uh, mask that goes under my, uh, my hood. Um, I use a 3M speed glass hood. It fits under there. It really is important to try and do some PPE guys. I ignored it for a long time, but as I get older, um, you know, eye, ear, nose, respirator protection, it's super important. So check those out. Anything that's purchased helps support this channel and we'll see you in the next one.